What's up y'all, it's Sam from Action VFX. I absolutely love the Dune films and was so excited to see it nominated all over the Oscars this year. I was actually so excited to see that they were nominated for Best Visual Effects that I actually made a Dune inspired VFX shot right here in this little room. And today, I'm going to show you how I did it. First and foremost, huge congratulations to all of the VFX artists and all of the teams that worked on Dune Part 2, and congratulations on your Oscar win. The first step was to build my own version of the filt plug for the still suit. You might recognize it as the little black tube that runs from the back of their head around and into their nostrils. You can buy them for cosplay, but I wanted to have a little more fun than that. So I hopped in the car and on my way to Lowe's. Once inside, I went full dad in a hardware store mode and channeled my inner Ron Swanson. Hey there, is there a project you're working on? I know more than you. All right. I made a beeline for the plumbing section, and lo and behold, I found exactly what I was looking for. All right, got the tubing, got the accessories. Now, need to pick up a couple extra things here for the rest of my house, and then we'll get back to it. And then it was right back here so we could get started. I gathered the materials, and it was here that I cut a piece of the tubing a little longer than I would need. I went ahead and cut the sharp point off of the 90 degree tubing connector, and then put them together and then it was time for a test fit. The material wasn't as soft as I wanted it to be, and it wasn't holding shape very well either. So I had to resort to using a heat gun, heating up the tubing, and then molding it to my face, while also being careful to try not to burn myself. It took a couple tries to get the bend just right, and I had to bend part of it over my ear so it would stay in place. Once I got it into the shape I wanted, I went ahead and cut off the excess behind the ear. And after that, the filt plug for the still suit was done. My next step was to find my shemog from back in my old airsoft days. After I got the shemog and the filt plug, it was time to set up the lighting. I placed one strong light off to my right side, coming in over my shoulder. The next light was a 2x2 two two LED panel with a softbox that I put right in front of my face. This was to mimic the sand illuminating my face from the sunlight behind me. I set up two tube lights behind me to light up the green screen. Turned on a quick box fan off to my left. The last logistic was how to create a dried skin effect from being in the desert. For this, I am actually just a man and don't have a skincare routine. So I've been working on it for years. Once I got this set up, I recorded myself doing actions a couple different ways to try to find one that felt the most natural. I ended up deciding to go with my last take. And once I had the take selected that I wanted, it was time to get into compositing. But before we get into that, let me tell you about why I love the lenses they use to film the Doom series so much and... That's... that's weird. It says there's a giant metal orb heading for Earth. Every great VFX shot starts with a vision. But making it real, that's where Action VFX comes in. Whether you're crafting a blockbuster, passion project, or anything in between, getting high quality VFX assets should not be complicated. That's why we built the biggest and best library of professional, ready to use VFX assets. So you can focus on creating and not compromising. No time for custom simulations, no problem. Our assets are designed for seamless integration into any workflow. Drag, drop, composite, done. Fire, rain, debris, whatever you need, it's here. And you can make effects like this in no time at all. It's far more efficient on your budget than waiting for a simulation to render or waiting for an actual comment. Now with options to subscribe or buy outright, you have the freedom to get the effects in your way. Action VFX is Hollywood quality made simple. <sighs> I hope that comment comes in soon because this curtain is getting hot. The first thing we're gonna do is pre-compose this scene. This footage was shot in 6K and we don't really wanna be applying the effects to 6K footage. So we're gonna pre-compose it so After Effects treats it like 2K footage. Next, we're going to key out the footage and remove the green screen background. To do this, we're going to use the key light plugin and we're going to sample a darker area of the green screen. From here, we want to check our alpha. So we're going to select that. And then we're going to adjust our alpha contrast until most of our alpha is solid. Thankfully, the background will also be a little tan, so this doesn't have to be perfect. We'll go back to our RGB preview and enable spill suppression. From here, let's mask out the C stand and then we'll drag in our background plate. Resize it and position it to where it needs to be for perspective. And as you can see, the highlights of the subject are on the left side, while the highlights of the background are on the right side. So to fix this, we're gonna right click on it, go over to transform, and then we're gonna do flip horizontal. And now let's begin adding our dust in the background. 
we're actually going to go ahead and use our Blizzard Snow assets from ActionVFX.com. These do a really good job when you composite them properly of looking like an actual sandstorm. So we're going to go ahead and drag those in and we're going to convert them over into Rec 709. We are doing this tutorial in an ACES workflow. If you're not familiar with ACES, check out this video that we made for you here to get you started. From here, we're going to start with our mid ground dust. So we're going to drag in this asset. And as you can see, our snow is actually moving in the wrong direction based upon the wind of the footage we just shot. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip that horizontal as well. And then we're going to go over and apply an unmolt effect. What this does is it removes the black background. Next, we're going to put this behind the subject and position it and do a quick little playthrough for funsies. We're going to apply a tint effect to color the snow so it looks more like sand. So we're going to choose a kind of orangey-ish color and go about halfway on the saturation. Next, we're going to add a curves to go ahead and darken the snow, but it's kind of disappearing. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this curves and we're going to bring it above our unmolt so that we can increase the brightness to thicken our alpha output. We're going to get it just to where colors are not flattening and we're going to bring our exposure back up a little bit and then we're going to go ahead and duplicate the layer. Let's offset the time so they don't look perfectly overlapped. Next, let's grab our other Blizzard Snow asset. This one will look better along the horizon. So what we're going to do is copy and paste the effects from our other Blizzard Snow assets directly onto this one. We'll position that to where it's just riding the horizon there. Forgot to flip this one horizontally, so we'll go ahead and do that. And do a quick little preview. And as you can see from our preview, this is coming along very nicely. We're going to want to speed up the snow just a little bit. So we're going to set the time stretch of all three to 80. And we'll do another preview to check the speed. And beautiful. That's what we're looking for right there. But now we're losing some of the dunes within the background because of how thick our snow assets are. So we're going to duplicate the background, bring it up over top of our snow assets, mask out the bottom, and feather it until we get the result we want. Next, let's bring some more snow over top of the new background we just added to blend it all together better. And we're going to scale these up a bit to add a little bit more depth to our scene, we're going to play around with some of the color, setting different ones between reds and oranges. This will make our shot feel a lot more dynamic. We're going to duplicate that again, offset the time, adjust the position, and we're going to change the color again to a more tannish tone. And so far, this is looking really good. Our sandstorm is coming together very nicely. The problem is we're losing the dunes again in the background. So we're going to go ahead and add a curves effect and increase the blacks within this layer. This will help to bring the shaping and the shadows of the dune out better. We're going to apply this to both our foreground and our background plates. And now we have a lot more definition within our background. We're going to add a little bit more variety to the sand by adjusting the curves and the colors of some of these layers just to get them a little bit more realistic looking within our scene. So for some of them, we're going to make them darker and on some of them, we're going to make them lighter. This helps to really layer the dust in and give it a really dynamic feel. We're going to continue to adjust these until we get a background result that we're pretty happy with. Similar to how we use the Blizzard Snow as dust, leave a comment down below telling us what assets you've repurposed into something different entirely. I love hearing all of the creativity and maybe you can give other users that are watching this some creative inspiration as well. Now we're going to add in the spices. For these, we're going to use an Action VFX asset from our Dust Particles collection. We want something that moves quickly, so we're going to choose Heavy Dust Particles 1. We'll go ahead and reposition it and scale it down to where we want it. Next, we're going to add a Curves effect, and we're going to increase the contrast of the dust particles so they're not quite so thick. Then we're going to unmolt it. We're going to apply a tint effect. The spices in Dune are red, so we're going to go with a good red color. Maybe make it a little oranger. There we go. We're going to set the blending mode to add since the spices glisten in the sun. And we're going to duplicate it to get a bit thicker of a result. We're going to reduce our amount to tint so we get a little more luminosity out of it. And now for the foreground dust. We're going to use another one of our Blizzard Snow assets, scale it and position it to where it needs to be. We're going to make this one super big. Since this one is more in the foreground, we're going to adjust the speed of it and we're going to change the time stretch to 70. Don't forget to flip it horizontally. And then we're going to add the unmolt. We're going to add a little bit of a curve to thicken the alpha again. 
and then we're going to apply another tint. This will give it the same sandy look as our background snow. Drag that below our spice layers, and we're actually going to bring the tint of one of the spice layers back up a little bit. It started to lose those reds once we added in our new foreground snow effects. Since our heavy dust particles aren't moving quite fast enough for our foreground spices, we're going to go ahead and bring in another Blizzard Snow asset. We're going to apply the interpretation to set this clip to Rec 709. Next, we want to get rid of some of that background snow. So we're going to add a curve. We're going to increase the highlights and decrease the blacks. Our next step is to add a camera lens blur. We're going to set the shape to Decagon. And to mimic the anamorphics that Dune was filmed with, we're going to set the aspect ratio of our blur to 0.5. From here, we're going to increase the blur. And then we're going to go back to our curve and we're going to adjust that contrast again just to reduce the number of snowflakes. We're going to add a tint, set it to red, then we're going to set our blending mode to add. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate that layer so we can see those new spices a little bit better. Now that we've gotten a lot of our dust composited, now we need to work on the eyes. In the Dune series, the spices make people's eyes turn blue. So that's what we're going to do here. The first step is to isolate your subject key. To get the motion tracking, I opened up the tracker window and selected a section off to the left side of my eye. This part will be best since it won't have a reflection in it. Unfortunately, this track didn't really work going backwards, but it works great going forwards from about the halfway point. Once you've gotten the tracker tracking data, go ahead and create a new null layer. We're going to set this as our target for the motion track data. Hit apply, and now that null has the motion track information. From here, we'll have to manually track the rest of the eye. Many hours later. Once you get a track that you're happy with, let's go ahead and bring in some eye textures to bring out some more blue in my eyes. We're gonna use this eye texture from Action VFX. Let's go ahead and drop that in, scale it and position it to exactly where it needs to be, and set the blending mode to screen. Now let's duplicate it and position it over the other eye. Select both and pick whip them to the new null. Now we're gonna create a blue solid. Go ahead and pick a color that's close to the color of the textures themselves. Move the layer below the eye textures, and then duplicate the subject key layer, then select the subject key layer, the null, the solid, and both eye textures, and pre-comp them together. We're going to call this new pre-comp eyes. Now that we have our new pre-comp, we're going to set the blending mode to color. Go ahead and drop it down right above the subject key layer, and then from here, we'll start masking out the actual eyeball itself. Go ahead and mask out the first eyeball, and then select the Mask Feather tool. We're going to expand the region where the eyelashes are to bring some of that color back over top of the eyeball, while making sure the mask at the base of the eye is not very soft at all. We'll do the same for the other eye, and then we'll begin animating these masks. We'll spare you having to watch the full thing, but a good tip to speed up your workflow is to animate your mask every 10 frames. You can do this by holding the Shift key and pressing Page Up or Page Down. Set the new position and then make tweaks between keyframes if needed. Several days later. And this is looking pretty good, but there are a few more details we want to go ahead and add in. The first has to do with the foreground dust layer. We want it to look a little bit more organic. So what we're going to do is duplicate the foreground blizzard snow and in the duplicated layer, let's go ahead and solo it. From here, adjust the curves that are above the unmult effect to increase the alpha. Next, let's create a new solid. We're going to make this one black. We're going to add the noise effect to it, and we're going to bring the intensity to 100%. Make sure that your noise is monochromatic by unchecking Use Color Noise. Next thing we're going to do is add a directional blur. We're going to set the direction to 90 degrees for a horizontal blur. Adjust the blur length to about 20. Let's go ahead and try scaling it up a bit. Next, pick whip the track mat of your solid to the duplicated blizzard mist. Make sure it is set to alpha mode. And now, our new noise texture is limited to the alpha of the blizzard mist. We're going to go ahead and apply a tint effect and give it a sandy color. Alt-click on the stopwatch beside direction in your directional blur. And for the expression, we're going to write wiggle 15, 15. Essentially, this wobbles our direction by 15 degrees, plus or minus 90 degrees, 15 times a second. The goal with this is to make it feel organic and like there's a turbulent wind pushing these dust particles around. So now let's unsolo our black solid and see our noise in action. And already this brings a lot more life to the scene. Finally, to bring it all together, I wanted to add a lens flare. 
I dragged in one of the icon anamorphic lens flares from Action VFX, scaled it down, and flipped it horizontally. Then I increased the contrast by applying a curves effect, followed by a hue and saturation to give it an orangey tint. I drug the saturation of this down so it wasn't quite so orange, and then I set the blending mode to add. To really make it feel like this lens flare was in a sandstorm, I added an expression to the opacity. Wiggle 25 24. This does a very similar thing as the rotation of the directional blur, but it increases or decreases the opacity by 25 24 times a second, essentially making it seem as though dust was flying in front of this lens flare and causing it to darken and brighten as that happened. I added a quick camera shake from Red Giant and went into DaVinci Resolve. From here, I did all of my color grading, and this is the final result. We have a lot more content coming in the future that will hopefully help both new and experienced visual effects artists continue to hone their skills and become better at their craft. Be sure to check out our website, actionvfx.com. Our goal at Action VFX is to empower you as a visual effects artist to become the best you absolutely can be. So with that, that's all that we have for you today. Thank you so much for watching and go make something really cool. If you watch this video and you use any of these tips and tricks and then you win an Oscar, you have to give Action VFX a shout out when you go to accept your Academy Award.